Welcome back to San Diego People. Some people say adapting the Community Choice Aggregation Program is not the right direction our city should be headed. Here to discuss why they are against the CCA program and the negative impacts is co-founder of Clean Tech San Diego, Jim Waring, and the president and CEO of Roper Capital, Bill Roper. Gentlemen, welcome back. I, I, the group in front of you paints a very rosy picture about clean energy that is affordable. It is a convincing argument. How could you want to take away clean energy at an affordable rate for the rest of us? Well, there's an easy and simple answer to that. Okay. Uh, we're not against clean energy. We're for it also. We just want to make sure it's done the right way. And the CCA approach is the wrong approach to the problem. Why? Very simply, the fact is there's not enough green energy being produced to meet our current and future needs as all the jurisdictions within the state try to climb from their current level to first 60% by 2030 and then 100% by 2045. There's not enough green energy out there. Our local leaders should be focusing on uh, uh, facilitating and incentivizing the development of clean energy production sources in state. Jim, uh, Matthew Vasilakis brought in graphics. He, he brought, he came equipped for show and tell. He showed a picture of both the north and south regions of our state building renewable energy sites. It's to, almost too numerous to point out. There is gonna be so much more, we're gonna be swimming in renewable energy. You say? That would be a wonderful outcome. But let me talk about your first question for just a second, okay. please. Remember, the CCAs are here to produce renewable energy, correct? Mm -hmm. That's given. But the state of California in the la last year passed Senate Bill 100, which dramatically increased the state mandate to 60% by 2030 and 100% by 2045. So I believe intellectually the CCAs at that point should have stepped back and said, if the state is mandating this, why are we duplicating something the state's going to do for only an incremental benefit? And so I just think the underpinning of the CCA went away. Now, as far as the, the, your direct question to me, people talk about all these projects that are being built. What I learned in my time around the energy business is scale is everything. So we can have people come in and build a 20 watt plant, some 20 megawatt plant someplace and a 10 someplace else and a 30 someplace else. It doesn't matter. You need big plants in areas where you have a high probability of production, the desert versus the coastal zone. And I think it's a complete disservice to paint the picture that we're gonna be able to build this in basin. And the last point I'll make on that, having been involved in land use battles over the years, yes. people, right or wrong, do not want production facilities located in their neighborhoods. So I would challenge, let's look at the map of our county, let's get the supervisors, let's get the members of the city council, let's get the mayors together and look at the map and point to the places where they think they can build these facilities. And I think you're gonna find there's a big shortage. Gentlemen, let's stipulate that you've forgotten more on the subject than I'll ever know. But just from a Joe Sixpack guy sitting here listening to this argument, it almost has a socialism versus capitalism feel to it. Th their side says, uh, too many excessive salaries in SGG&E. We want to give that money back to the people in the, in the form of lower rates. Your side seems to say, hey, uh, you, you, that's not going to happen. The, there's, we're not going to be able to, we don't want to have to distribute the income. What is the truth? Well, the truth is that the, the other side is misrepresenting the picture. It's easy to demonize the local utility. We're not here as representatives of the utility, but they know, and we know, state regulations require that SDG&E or any other investor-owned utility cannot make any money on the transfer of the power from the production source to the local grid. On the excuse me, on the acquisition Acqui of the power. Yeah, they yeah make acquisition money on the of the power uh, to when they transmit it to the local grid and then they do the local services. They can't mark that up. So there's no money going to fat executive salaries or New York shareholders, as you may have heard. Right. That's, that's, that's a misrepresentation and, and they know that. The other side knows that. But everything I've ever learned in school is choice lowers costs. No, increased supply lowers cost. 
if you have, if we have a, we're trying to buy 100 units of something and you're the only bidder, you're going to negotiate a price. Let's assume the three of us are bidders. Do you think the price is going to go down? Of course not. It's going to go up because the person that owns those 100 units now has three people competing. So choice does not lower prices. It's basic economics. Increasing supply it lowers cost. And so I've never understood why people say, gee, if we give people choice, if there are more choices, the price will go down. Maybe I missed that part of economics, but that's just false. All right, let me address another element that came up that I thought was sounded very attractive in the uh, preceding guest argument. The, I'm going to get an invoice in the mail once all this comes to be, if it comes to be. And on one side, I'm going to see what the C, CA price will be. On the other side, I'm going to see the SD G&E price for my monthly utility bill. And then I can look at that one and say, oh, that one's a little sm light, lighter. I'm going to have more money in my pocket. I'm going to go with this choice. And if it happens to be the CCA, I'll take it. What, what's wrong with that? If, we, if I'm going to be able to get an invoice and I'll say, I, I'm going to go, I'll let the... Let the paper do the talking. Can I answer that one, Bill? Got to take a shot well, at that? Please, sure. take a shot okay, at it. Let me take a shot at that. That's one of the fundamental weaknesses of this entire model because here's what they're saying. We're going to have two potential providers of an essential commodity. One's a CCA, the other's utility. And people are going to be able to move back and forth between the two based upon price signals. That's what that argument's saying. Right. Who's, that means that the CCA needs the infrastructure to service 100% of the population. Mm -hmm. The utility needs the infrastructure to service 100%. These are long-term contracts. So two sides are going to be bidding for a long-term power supply when there'll be some 5, 6, 7% flipping back and forth between the two. That's a redundancy in cost. It's going to be built into the pricing. The CCA model actually would make more sense if the CCA in San Diego County took over 100% of SDG&E's service area. I've said before that if they were taking 100%, then you could make a mathematical argument because you eliminate the duplicity and you give them the scale and the certainty of demand that they could monetize. But this idea of splitting is, in my opinion, absurd. You know, not, again, uh, the, the green, everybody wants green energy. Everybody wants to leave the campsite cleaner than the way they found it. So they have the, do, do they have the higher ground as far as just the public relations aspect to it? Well, I think they've done a good job of wrapping themselves up in the flag, so to speak. But we're not opposed to green energy or clean energy. And the state has mandated it. So it's going to happen. It's just how do we do it most effectively and how do we get more production, more plants, more power plants, more green energy power plants, solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, built quickly. And, and CCAs don't have anything to do with that, the building of new power plants. They're just buying power from the same people that the utilities do. This, this becomes a battle for the hearts and minds of the consumer. They, I, I assume, can advertise to the hilt, whereas you guys have to fight this fight. You're, you're restricted in how you can market, right? As, as far, can, you, well, can you go to the public airwaves, take out ads and, and whatnot? Well, you, you could, but as a practical matter, you wouldn't. And I go back to on, like, on, your, electric, on your electrons, on your electricity, people don't think about it. This is not, it's not like I, I decided to wear this shirt today. I made a choice on this shirt. I don't think about where the electricity comes from. You right. guys in this studio using all this electricity, you're not thinking whose electrons are they. Right. You don't care. It's, it's, I think there's, there's an illusion here that the, the public's paying that much attention. I think they have more important things to do than, than worry about the source of the electricity. What, what I learned is that what people care about is that when they hit the switch, the light goes on. That's what matters. I suspect this argument will continue for the foreseeable future. I'm will sure it not? will. Mr. Roper, Mr. Waring, I appreciate your time. I suspect we'll do this again. I enjoyed your, our conversation. I learned a little bit more so I can stay in this conversation a little bit longer. Thank you. Yeah, thank All you. right, there will be more debate before city council rules or goes against the idea of adapting CCA at the end of the year. We'll update you on the progress of both arguments. That's it for this morning's edition of San Diego People. Please join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11.